Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at these EVE 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now I tested very similar batteries before about two months ago now and I really liked what I saw. So I went out and purchased some more but I used a different supplier this time. I purchased 32 of these batteries from Shenzhen Basin Technology Company. The total cost delivered to my door was $3,442 and that is all inclusive of all fees, shipping charge, and anything like that. That calculates out to $108 per battery or just around $120 per kilowatt hour of storage. Now these batteries came packaged in boxes of two with thick foam on all sides to protect from any kind of damage. I'm not sure what exact kind of foam this is. It feels plasticky, it's not styrofoam. And it also came with quite a bit of hardware, which is something the previous supplier had forgotten to include. So one of the first things I do with these prismatic batteries is I look over the QR codes and make sure they're all intact, they're all original. Typically when someone sells uh, grade B or lower or used or something like that sells on the market, they scratch these off or they may put something else over them, they may put a sticker over them. But every one of these cells, the QR code is intact and they all match each other, unlike the last seller where I had purchased four batteries and had two different styles of QR codes. On the front we just have a sticker identifying the cell, it's 3.2 volts, 280 amp hours, and the voltage and the IR, or internal resistance, when they checked them was 3.29 volts or 0.15 milliohms. And we all know voltage is not really a good indicator of health or state of charge on lithium iron phosphate batteries, but there it is anyway I suppose. Now I inspected these batteries very thoroughly on all sides. Um, they are all pristine. They're perfect. There are no dents. There's no scratches, scrapes, tape, anything like that. One thing I noticed with these batteries from the first supplier is that there are pieces of tape either under or on top of the shrink covering things like, you know, writing. You can see some writing over here. I don't even know what this is, but there's no tape on the Basin cells. Out of all 32, this was the only imperfection I could find on one cell. I don't know, it looks like somebody dropped something or scraped it or filed it or, you know, I don't know what that is, but it's not going through, it's not a big deal to me. I also carefully inspected the terminals. They do show signs like somebody may have connected something at one point, and I'm told these cells do get cycled and charged before they're shipped out, so that's probably from the test process. And the last thing, of course, to check is to make sure none of them are bulged. And as you can see, they all fit together fairly well. There's very little to no space in between them. You know, that one's got a little bit there, but that may be the way it's sitting on the table. All right, so one thing I want to do too is weigh a couple of these and make sure the weight is in line with the specifications. These cells should weigh 5,220 grams, plus or minus 200 grams. I'm just gonna grab a few at random here. 5,340, 5,360, 5,354, 5,342. So looking at the hardware I received with these batteries, we have a threaded stud. This is an M6, I believe, and it's got an Allen head at one end. And they also included serrated flange nuts, which is wonderful. I also received two separate Allen wrenches for the Allen head part of the stud, and a whole pile of these uh, bus bars. And these are actually tinned copper. I did file one back to make sure there was copper underneath. It's not aluminum or steel or anything like that. So unfortunately I don't have my caliper to check the thickness. I'm not really sure where it's at. But if I use a ruler to get a best guess it looks like it's about two millimeters in thickness. Now I wasn't planning on using the hardware that came with it. I thought I was going to have to go out and buy my own, but this is actually some very nice hardware. These are stainless steel studs, stainless steel nuts, and a pure copper bus bar that's, that's plenty thick in my opinion for my usage. So I may be actually using this hardware, which is great because now I won't have to go out and spend additional money on new hardware. And I really do appreciate they are shipping studs with these of a reasonable length. They're not including Phillips screws or anything weird like that like I've seen with some other vendors. All right, so now we're gonna wire four of these in a 12 volt block, and we're gonna show you how to do that, and then we're gonna begin the capacity test, which is usually the part people are most interested in seeing. So I'm gonna thread one of the stainless steel studs into each cell, just by hand, and I'm leaving the Allen head part pointed upward. All right, now that that's completed, I always wear safety glasses when I'm working on batteries like this. So we're gonna double check the polarity. We're wiring these in series. We have positive, negative, positive, negative. And now we can go ahead and lay our bus bars across. So I'm going to be using a DALI BMS for this test. This is for lithium iron phosphate, 4S 12 volt, 100 amp of current. And that means at 100 amp discharge and 50 amp charge. 
This is the common port version, which means you have a battery minus and a P minus, and this P minus handles both the charging and the discharging functions. So this is the standard cable it comes with. You have one black wire and four red wires. So the black wire goes on the main negative terminal, and then you'll work your way up in order, placing one red wire on each of the series connections until you get to the last red wire, which will go on the main positive terminal of the battery pack. Next, I'm putting on one of the flange nuts, hand tightening it down. And then I have a 10 millimeter wrench that I insulated with some tape because you absolutely do not want to short out these batteries. And I also want to make sure as I'm tightening this down that I'm not threading the stud down into the battery and risk cracking the terminal of this battery. So I'm inserting the Allen head and just tightening it down by hand. Now these are aluminum uh, threads on here, so you do not want to over tighten this. I don't know what the correct torque for these is. I believe it's either four or five foot pounds. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm just hand tightening them down for the purpose of this test. And this Allen wrench probably should be insulated as well. I didn't think of that until I'm sitting here using it on the video. So if you have tools, please make sure they're insulated before you. So on the main negative terminal of the battery pack, put that on first and then I'll place the balance lead and then the nut goes on. On the positive side of the battery, I just have this uh, Anderson 175 amp hour uh, cable I usually use for testing. So I'm taking the positive lead from that, placing that on, and then placing the ring terminal for the BMS on, and then the nut as well. Alright, so now that the negative lead's on the battery, I'm ready to plug in my balance connector after I've double checked the wiring to make sure none of the wires are mixed up. And then I put some double-sided tape on the back of this BMS and I'm hoping I could leave it stuck here for the duration of the test. We'll see how well that works. So, all right, so I have my standard test setup wired here. The negative lead is going into this batrium shunt and then it goes into the inverter. The positive lead is going directly into the inverter and there's a small wire that comes off of the shunt and is attached to the positive lead of the battery and that's just to sense the voltage of the battery. This data is gathered from my batrium off camera and transmitted this Android tablet. We are at 13.97 volts currently. These batteries are full charged. I made sure to charge these four last night in preparation for today's testing. So I'll turn the inverter on now. And for testing, I'll be running the space heater on low. Now the spec sheet for these EVE batteries define the standard test as discharging from 3.65 volts down to 2.5 volt cutoff using a 0.5C load. So I'll let them run down until this DALI BMS shuts it off and we'll see where we're at. And we're pulling 73 amps currently, which comes out to be a 0.26 load. So that's fairly close to the 0.2C rate we would normally use. So I also wired up this little BATGO display in the top from ISDD. And this will allow us to see the cell level voltages of all four cells at the end of the discharge test. Alright guys, there you go. These batteries tested in right at 280 amp hours as advertised. Now I did notice that during the discharge test the in voltage was a little bit lower than 2.5 volts. I rechecked the specifications on this DALI BMS and these are programmed for a 2.2 volt cutoff. I assume it was done that way to try and be a happy medium between the batteries that allow 2.0 volts and the ones that allow 2.5 volts. I don't necessarily think it's a problem, especially for the purpose of this testing. During normal use, it is not advised to go all the way down to 2.5 volts anyway. The specification sheet for these batteries recommends keeping the state of charge, or SOC, in the range of 10 to 90% anyway. Um, and by doing so, you'll significantly extend the life of your cells. That being said, I definitely do recommend Shenzhen Basin as a provider to purchase these cells. Um, I am not disappointed whatsoever with these batteries, how they perform, the customer service, the packaging, nothing. And I think it was around seven weeks from the time I ordered these until the time they were delivered at my door, which is fantastic as well. You know, if it were up to me, I would go ahead and purchase another 64 of these batteries today. That's how much I like these things. I've had some 18650 cells and other things I've been trying to sell in the meantime to fund this project, but, uh, but so far there hasn't been much interest in those cells. But either way, there'll be a few more videos of these batteries coming up as I figure out how I'm going to connect them, store them, and uh, you're supposed to compress them when you're using them. I need to figure that out as well. 
But that'll be over the next two to three months, really. Uh, it's still winter here, and it's not very enjoyable to be working outside. If you found this video interesting, please hit that like button down below. It helps the channel a lot. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave those as well. And thanks for watching.